One of the biggest problems I see in relationships, because it involves a decrease in libido, more conflict, as well as less effective communication, is the concept of resentment. Resentment builds over years, and that's why it's resentment, because it isn't addressed effectively from the beginning. When you're resentful, you feel angry, you feel envious, you're actually feeling like you're taken advantage by someone who loves you or is supposed to love you, and it doesn't feel fair. You begin to feel bitter and resentful, meaning you're angry and you're envious, that they can live the way they live and still allow you to have what you have, meaning that you get the short end of the stick. And when you feel that way, day after day, and you're not able to express it, you're going to start getting more irritable, you're going to start pulling away in the bedroom, and you're going to start looking for another vice or another way out to make you feel better about yourself. Oftentimes, people who are resentful use destructive tactics like the silent treatment passive aggressive ways. They try to hurt their partner in a way that is they know is going to stab them in the heart. Maybe they have an affair. They do something that is equally sneaky because the bottom of the, the problem is they cannot talk about how they feel at the time. And that is the biggest culprit that we have to change in a relationship to restore its intimacy, restore its health, restore it to a vital um, connection between the two of you that it needs to be if you're going to create something good. So if you're thinking, hmm, maybe that's our problem, maybe resentment is, resentment is underneath this, and then you start thinking, you say, well, I know it is a little bit for me, but I wonder maybe it is for my partner too. I've got a list of some ways you see it, and then if you will share this with your partner and watch it together, I think if your partner can be honest with you and vulnerable, you can start the discussion now about how to end it or how to get through it. The first, they make passive aggressive words or actions. Um, you might see an increase of sarcasm, especially between the, the person that is the most sarcastic or most resentful. Secondly, increased agitation or directed towards your partner or the offending, um, whoever the offensive person is the most. You feel like you want to escape the relationship. You have reduced feelings of empathy, of compassion, and this is what makes emotional or physical cheating easier for you. Less interest in sex or intimacy, feelings of disgust or disappointment in your partner, frequently complaining to others about your partner. And I see a lot in that, of that in my friends and my clients, which is why I know this is a huge topic. On the other hand, if your partner is the one feeling resentful towards you, it may feel like this, a feeling of distance between you and your partner, um, anxiety about the relationship, an increase in arguments and confusion as to why they're occurring. Now remember, this is if you, your partner is resentful, but you're not and you're not really queuing in yet. Uh, you feel ignored by your partner or as if you don't matter anymore. Because remember, they're going to use a passive aggressive tactic usually because that's what re resentment basically is built on. Okay, so how can you stop it? You can stop it with therapy. And I'm going to say that up front because a therapist can help you work on it. But if you don't have the funding or you're really concerned about going to therapy for whatever reason, then I would suggest you implement these tactics. Try to change your relationship to do more of these, okay? Re address the, relation, the relationship problem as it occurs. So whatever is making you feel resentful, you're gonna need insight into that. You need to address examples of it when it occurs and say, this is one of the things I usually hang on to and it makes me bitter and resentful and angry. Learn to effectively communicate or express your feelings. The chances are high that if you cannot express 
an issue when when you know it's going to make you resentful that there's other areas you hold back and remember a healthy relationship automatically means it needs you to be honest about how you feel so it's important that you get insight into what you're feeling um, keep your expectations realistic. If you have expectations that your partner is going to do something miraculous when they're human, that is not going to happen. So it's important that this is not over the top of an expectation that your partner is never going to be able to do. And in that case, what I would ask or say to my partner is, listen, I know this isn't fair, but this is really what I want. How can we create this? I know it isn't your thing, but can you help me create it? Saying something like that is gonna pull your partner in and connect with you. Plus, it's going to make you feel better about your partner. Okay, so after that, this is the real tips for dealing with it. Consciously acknowledge that there is resentment, okay? How do you do that? You verbally tell your partner, I'm gonna fess up, I have a lot of resentment. And your partner's gonna say, why? Then it's important to pinpoint the exact examples as much as you can. Focus on the good things your partner does and I mean that. Are there things your partner is doing really well to love you? You need to give that more of your focus than the things that they're falling short on. Investigate your role in resentment. Maybe you're carrying past resentment from your parents or grandparents that was unknowingly passed on to you. And now you're carrying this baggage that you don't need to do. You're not gonna know that until you get real with where is this coming from and how am I enabling it to grow within me? Um, learn ways to compromise. People who are resentful have a really strong attitude that, oh, just let me do it. I can do it better. I'll do it by myself because then it'll get done the best way. That's a control issue. That's not healthy. So if that's where you're falling short with ending your resentment, that's an important thing that you can tackle and you can tackle by yourself by telling your partner, this may not be the way I want it to be done, but I need your help here so I don't become bitter or resentful. And I think that is a very healthy way to script it and to say it to your partner. And lastly, I think it's really important with resentment that you forgive. You need to forgive yourself for the bitterness and the inability to say what you're resentful about in the past. And in order to go forward, you need to make a commitment to yourself. Even if it's just, I, Mary Jo Rapini, promise that when a topic comes up, that I am going to feel angry, envious, or taken advantage for by doing that I will tell you. Something as simple as that, a contract, I give it to my partner and then my partner reminds me every once in a while, is there something that you forgot to tell me? Is there something you're hanging on to that's making you angry or upset? That's going to really help jar your memory and help you get it out. More than likely, we don't have evidence of this with our research, but people who grow up in resentful homes or have at least one resentful parent seem to be groomed for it do it easier, and they usually will follow it in their adult life. Cut that out, okay? That is not okay. You are not your parents' past mistake or your grandparents or whatever the problems were they dealt with while you were growing up. You can change, you can move forward, and you don't have to be resentful anymore.